Welcome to week two of the hero's journey, your path to greatness. Just like every hero in every movie, every story ever must face and overcome a villain in order to get to greatness, you have to too. There's a villain standing in your way and blocking your path between you and greatness. Today, you're going to unmask your villain. By the way, if you're a giver, I wanna say thank you. Your generosity makes episodes like this possible and is literally changing thousands of lives. Let's get started. Welcome to the hero's journey, where you will discover your role in the most important mission. But there are four villains that are trying to get in your way. Frankie Feelgood, Lieutenant Lucius Livid, Senator Selfie, Heinous Highness. All of these villains can sabotage the full, joyful life God wants for you. Today, hear from Brian, Kyle, Lena, and Paco as they work together to find the clues and unmask the villains that want to destroy you. Man, look at this place. Oh. All right, open it up. So there's a letter in here. It says there are four villains that try to steal from us on a heroic mission. Your mission, if you choose to accept it, will be to uncover their true identity. To get out of this house and continue on your journey, you will need to work together to crack the code and unmask the villains. You are Frankie Feelgood. Frankie's all about immediate gratification, runs from pain, doesn't like to face reality, considers pleasure his greatest purpose. Hmm, tell you what, I, I wanna be great. I wanna do world-changing, life-changing things for God. God is great, so greatness is a good thing. The number one issue that I run into in trying to be great, well, spoiler alert, it's not the devil. He's not that busy. It's not even my weird neighbors. Oh, by the way, if you don't have any weird neighbors, you're probably one of the weird neighbors. The number one thing that stops me from being great is my need to feel good in the moment. Jim Collins says it like this, says, good is the enemy of great. I might add that feeling good is the enemy of great. And I think you're watching this video right now because somewhere deep inside of you, you have a desire to do something with your life, something great. You might even think that God has designed you for great things long ago. And the number one thing stopping you is what you want right now. We all want a life that matters. We all want a life of meaning. We all want a full life with full relationships, with vibrant community around us, and with, with impact and service in the world heroic type stuff, but here's the problem. Most of our days, they start a little bit different. We say we want great relationships, but the first thing we do when we wake up, instead of saying, I love you to the people around us, we pick up the old phone and scroll the news feed for that quick anxiety rush. We say we wanna have great energy to get through the day, but what happens is we rush out the house, we grab a donut or a sugary energy drink or a coffee and we hit traffic on the way to work. We say we want to have great networking relationships while at our job, but what happens is we do our best to keep our heads down and not, not bring enough attention to ourselves or not even try to talk to our coworkers, do our best to not cuss out the customers or our boss. And then it's time to come home. We numb a little bit more, we eat some junk, we smoke a little, we drink a little, we doom scroll till we fall asleep. You see, this is Frankie Feelgood's modus operandi, that you and I, would trade in what we really want for what we want right now. Frankie leaves us overstimulated and underfulfilled. But the good news is, you and I, we can kick Frankie in the teeth. We can beat Frankie feel good. And I'm gonna show you how. Lucius Livid. Right here, we got a card about Lucius Livid. It says, is always ready for a fight. 
Anyone gets in his way is an enemy. Can't control his anger, lets his emotions run the show. Oh, all right. You want the truth? I like to sleep and not be woken up. I like to not be bothered, especially when I don't want to be. And I like to be listened to the very first time. And when I don't, when these things don't happen, I get angry. In his abundant wisdom, God chose to give me children, three of them, in three years. And from the moment they arrived, it was abundantly clear that they weren't really interested in the things that I liked, like sleeping, not being bothered, and being listened to the very first time, especially at bedtime, when all I want for them to do is stay in your room. They don't seem to care about that so much. Now, just to be clear, when I put you to bed, I'm not suggesting one of many things you could do with your evening. This isn't a cruise ship. We have lots of different excursions for you to choose from at your leisure and enjoy whatever you want you pick. No, when I put you to bed, I am giving you an explicit command. My word is law and my law is unbreakable. Unless you're a tiny human being with a mind all your own, in which case my law is about as durable as IKEA furniture. It breaks super easy. So there's that. Now, the thing is, Anger stands in my path to greatness. Lieutenant Lucius Livin. And he's tricky to defeat because there's a monster underneath the mask he's wearing. And that's what we have to get to. You are Senator Selfie. Senator Selfie, okay. Senator Selfie is completely absorbed, can't get out of her own head, strives for self-made success, views others' successes as her failures, believes the grass is always greener, and compares herself to everyone. I don't know someone like that, do you? Okay, actually, I think I'm totally Senator Selfie. I am, I'm Senator Selfie. I, just the other day, was spending all this time scrolling through Instagram. And I wasn't scrolling through Instagram because there was something good to look at. I was looking at my own stuff. I was going back and saying, how did I look in that? What did my hair look like? Did I look fat? Was that a better picture than her picture? What about this? What about, I was comparing myself to everyone. Gross. Okay, then I'm sitting in a meeting this morning and we're talking about something. I'm in a room with completely capable, smart, wonderful people. And yet, I'm thinking, as we're hearing new ideas and a plan we're gonna go after that I didn't have any say into, I'm thinking, well, why didn't we? Well, couldn't we have? Shouldn't we? Did they think about this? Don't they know that if we just did this, it would be so much better? I actually have those thoughts all the time, which I'm really not proud of. And honestly, I think I deal with Senator Selfie more than anybody else. Because I often think that I'm the greatest. Spoiler alert, I'm not the greatest. And you're not the greatest either. Jesus is the greatest. You are heinous highness. Heinous highness is manipulative. Absolutely loves drama. Wants to win at all costs. Tells people what they want to hear and will do whatever it takes to be in control. <laughs> in other words, sounds like Heinous Highness is an average American. One of our great football coaches in America, Vince Lombardi, he said, show me a good loser and I'll show you a loser. We love to win at all times. We want to be on the top at all times. If we're not on top, we want to feel like we're on top. We basically want to be king and we want to be queen. We will we'll find our own data to reinforce whatever we believe. We'll find our own voice boxes or our own preachers or self-help gurus to tell us what we need to hear, what we're about, all because we want to be on top. We want to feel like we're a king or queen above everybody else. 
I struggle with this. I understand this tension completely. I, I lead an organization that exists with a lot of people who are paid and unpaid. And oftentimes I'll be in a meeting and I'll feel that I want my way to win. I shouldn't want my way to win. I should want the best way to win. I'll feel like I want to tap into my communication skills when I'm in a meeting at work or when I'm with my wife to win the argument, to be the high one, to be the mighty one. The problem is this is not very heroic. And if my journey is to put crowns on my head, I won't be a hero at all. I'll be a sham. No one will want to be around me and I will not get closer to God and feel his pleasure in my life. We have got to take off our crowns to be on a heroic journey and slay the heinous highness that's in all of us. Frankie is beatable and how do we beat him? Well, I'm gonna give you some tips on how I do it. First thing I gotta do is I gotta find a plan. Zig Ziglar says that if you aim for nothing, you will hit it every single time. And here's a pro tip on plans. If your plan has the word more or less in it, it's a bad plan. I wanna work out more. More than who? The Rock? I wanna drink less. Less than who? Gary Busey? You gotta be specific in what you want. Get as detailed and as laser focused in on what you really want. Second thing I do is I find some help. People like Alex and Jonas and Xavier and Adam, these are guys that cheer me on and they hold me accountable when I'm deviating off the course that I've set or the course that God has set for me. They're, cheer, they're cheering me on. And you might be watching this and being like, man, I wish I had somebody to have my back like that. I wish I had somebody who could help me like that. Well, good news, we're here for you. The great news is people throughout all generations who've walked this path that God has set out for them, this path towards greatness, they're also cheering us on. In Hebrews 12.1, the writer talks about a great cloud of witnesses. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. The most important step in beating Frankie feel good gotta find a mirror. You see, mirrors don't lie. You look in the mirror, the mirror is gonna tell you the truth. And I know when some of us look into a mirror, we don't like what we see. Maybe there's some shame or some guilt or some regret. I'm not talking about just physically. I'm talking about more of the deeper things. Like, I don't like the way I'm treating people or I don't like the person I'm becoming, but we've gotta do the hard work of looking in the mirror if we're really gonna defeat Frankie. And we gotta ask the hard questions. So let's look in the mirror together right now. Why are you so broke? Because you like buying stuff you don't need. Why are you not as healthy as you need to be? Because you like eating stuff that's bad for you. Why can't you kick that addiction? Oh, because you like the temporary pleasure in the moment. Why are your relationships always crumbling around you? Because you make every relationship about you. Why is it so easy for us to blame our problems on the devil and on liberals? Because it feels so good to place blame somewhere else. The thing about looking in the mirror, it might make us feel weak in the moment, but let me tell you something, where your weaknesses start, that's where God's strength can show up. Where I'm weak, he can be made strong. And when I look into the mirror, I can, I can look at myself or I can see that the very presence of God, Jesus himself, is closer to me than I can even imagine. God doesn't run away when we seize our weaknesses. God doesn't jump ship when things go wrong with us. In fact, he's right there with us. Hebrews 12, 2 says this, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. God is going to do heroic things in our lifetime and he's gonna use people to make it happen. Question is, is he gonna use you? Or are you gonna sell yourself short for what you want right now? You can do great things in your life and God is going to use you and you can beat Frankie, but you've got to follow in the footsteps of Jesus.
You know the Avengers movie where Mild Manor, Bruce Banner, gets agitated and turns into this like raging monster called the Hulk? That's what happens to me at bedtime. If you don't stay in your room! Ugh. Now it happens for a reason. It's not because I'm angry. See, anger is just the symptom above the surface. But if you want to get past anger on your path to greatness, you have to deal with what's below the surface, the real monster. You have to unmask Lieutenant Lucius Livid. And when you do, what you'll find standing there is fear. Underneath every angry outburst lies fear. Something you love something that's precious to you, something you depend on is being threatened and it manifests outward as anger. For me, there's one reason I get mad at bedtime. It's because I carry a lot of weight and responsibility in my life, probably more than I should with my family, at work, with dozens of employees who depend on me, with a community of thousands of people who I'm tasked with pastoring. In most days, if I'm honest, it feels like I can barely keep up. I have just a tiny bit of energy left at the end of the day. That's it. And I'm afraid if I don't get rest, you don't stay in your room. If I don't sleep, tomorrow's going to be the day I don't have what it takes. The reason I'm angry is because I'm afraid that I'm not enough. If you're somebody who struggles with anger, the question you need to ask yourself is what is it that I'm afraid of? What is it that I hold dear that's being threatened and I'm afraid of losing? If you can get to that, you can deal with anger because all anger sits on top of fear. And the Bible has explicit instructions about how you deal with the fear. It's not just trying not to be afraid. Just like the way you defeat anger is not just try to be more patient, just try to be more kind. That will never ever work. The way you defeat the fear under your anger has one solution, it's love. 1 John 4.18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. The antidote to the fear that's driving your anger is love, perfect love. You know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13 that love is patient and kind. If you lack patience, if you lack kindness in your, in your immediate instinctual responses, it's because you lack love. And here's what I want you to understand. The solution is not now just try to love people. No, you can't give what you don't have. The solution is for you to receive love, for you to be filled up. And there's one way that that happens. Earlier in the book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 16, it says, and we have known and believed the love that God has for us. Listen, if you're angry, the thing you're missing is love. And the only way to get it is to work on knowing and believing the love that God has for you. Not people in general, not your family, not your next door neighbor, not people who do it all right, for you. For Sean says that God is love. That means that God is patient. God is kind towards you. When you understand this, when you can know in your, in your mind and you can believe in your heart that God loves you, the anger fades away. Why? Because when there's a God of the universe who controls everything and he loves you, what's there to be afraid of? When that happens, the anger gets snuffed right out. Senator Selfie here. Okay, I'm not the greatest, you're not the greatest, Jesus is the greatest, but it's okay to want that sometimes. Jesus was hanging out with his friends one day and for some reason their mom was there. I don't know what was happening, but she actually asked, how do my kids become the greatest? And Jesus said, the son of man, referring to himself, didn't come to be served, but to serve others. What a roundabout way to answer that question. But what he was actually saying was, the way you become the greatest is you serve others. If I want to defeat Senator Selfie and you want to defeat Senator Selfie, the place we have to start is by serving others. I often can feel like 
I'm the main character. It's about me, it's my life, it's my story. But because I know Jesus, I actually have to shift to believe that I'm a supporting character in his story, that he's the greatest and I get to support the greatest and I get to help others. I get to be support to others and in doing that, I can become great. That's true for me and that's true for you. Our path to greatness, the way that we defeat our pride, Senator Selfie, is to spend more time focusing on others. There's actually a part of the Bible in Philippians that says exactly this. Philippians 2, 2 through 3 says this. Complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. We become great teammates. We experience joy and we give joy away when we fight the selfishness in us, when we fight our pride and we choose humility instead. Humility doesn't mean that we just think less of ourselves like, oh, what was me? I suck, I'm crappy. No, humility is just thinking of ourselves less and putting others ahead of ourselves choosing to put others' thoughts, ideas, perspectives, needs, and wants ahead of our own. You might be Senator Selfie. The way that you defeat Senator Selfie is you choose to be humble and support other people before yourself. To be great, to be heroic, Heinous Highness must be defeated. And how do you defeat Heinous Highness? It's not by physical might, it's by spiritual power. It's the role of humility. Humility is when you lower yourself underneath somebody instead of exalting yourself and putting your crown on, thinking how great you are and telling everybody how great you are, you intentionally take it off, you lower yourself. This is what Jesus did. The book of Philippians chapter two tells us that Jesus humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. He, he spreads out his arms on a cross and he dies for us. And the crazy thing is, in the grand scheme of eternity, he actually gets exalted and God gives him a name above every name. He defeats his own desires to be known in his lifetime in order to be known by God and, and rewarded by God forever. One of the books in the Bible that talks about forever is the book of Revelation in chapter four, verse 10. It has these people who are known as uh, elders. There's 24 of them. We don't really know exactly who these people are. Why is there 24 of them? We don't know exactly, but we do know what these people do, that they are great and they are heroic. And why and how? Because they're humble enough to take off their own crowns, whatever their own personal kingdom is, whatever their business is, whatever their family is, whatever their success is, they take off their crowns and they cast them at the feet of Jesus. That's the ultimate humility. Throwing your accomplishments and your view of yourself as low as it go on the ground and they say, worthy, worthy is the lamb. Worthy is God. I'll tell you what, you come to a place of humility you put your crown on a shelf, you cast your crown beneath God, you are not just going to be heroic, you're going to be great. And people are gonna be thankful for you in the grand scheme of your life. the journey, the path to greatness. This is it. I guess I didn't connect Kyle, those two parts Kyle, there. That's... We don't see it. Dude, it's, you know, it's there. How long have you been down it's here? It's there. I, I don't know, Pop. I, like, uh, like at least I could see the moon and it came and then it went and then it came again. Oh. So I think anyway, the point is it's, it's solved, except for I just got to put those up. You guys want to help me? This is my guy. What do you mean it's your guy? I got, I, I got this guy. This is my villain. Oh, you got a, you got one too. This is my right. villain. Frankie feel good, man. That he wants us sick. to be 
immediately gratified. He wants us to trade in what we really want for what we want right now. And I figured out how to unmask him. I figured out how to beat him. What'd you say? What? So I said, the way you unmask him is you follow Jesus footsteps. That's, yes, yeah. that's great. Write that down. There's so many Fs in that. Just like the, just like the F here. It's Maybe so that's great. a clue. What, what do you mean? Well, the for letters. the box! Okay, yeah. There's a, the whole time. Do we, do you want to try to get the others? Yeah. You know this guy with the teeth? By yes, the yep, that was my guy. Oh, uh, great. That was, that was livingkindmalucious.lt. This guy's all about anger, right? And the thing about anger is that it's just the thing visible above the surface, but if you unmask him, what you find underneath is fear. Hmm. And so I talked about the way to defeat fear is, first John, who knows it? Perfect love! There it is! Hey, there there it is. That's what I said. Cast Dude, put him up there. Fear. Can you, you want to hold my magnifying oh, glass? I'd love to. It's great. Perfect love. It's great. Starts with yeah, an L, too. Who'd you have? Who'd you I have? I had selfie. I had Senator. Selfie. Who's that one? Senator Selfie. Senator Selfie. How do you unmask her? Okay, so I think the way to unmask Senator Selfie is to take the attention off of ourselves and support others. Ooh. So, here she is. Here, okay. I got you. Okay. Okay. Support others. Exclamation. That's great. Love it. Well, there's one more left and, by the way, where's Brian? I don't, I thought uh, it was with you guys. I, saw I thought he was with you down here. There's one more left. Heinous Highness. Heinous. Totally. I gotta imagine Brian that this, her, this person. Yeah, what do you think Brian said about it? You know, well, if, if her profile is uh, she's manipulative, loves drama, wants to win at all costs, I bet you there's something in there about humility. Ooh. Yeah. Cause it starts with an H too. Yeah. Oh, we have a pattern. There is something happening right? here. We got Freddie Feelgood, F. You defeat him by following. Lieutenant Lucius Livid. You defeat the L with love. S with support. H with humility. Oh my goodness. Flush. Flush. It says, obviously, flash. 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 That's what I meant, flash. Let's try it. One, two, three. <laughs> I actually meant try it on the lawn, oh. but we can also just say flesh I thought we were making a I thought we, we were making to. a group yeah. cheer. That's okay. If we're not, big, if we're not at that long. Relate, relationship level with each other, yeah, we don't I have think a group cheer. I think we need to get okay. out of this house. Okay, okay. okay. sooner rather than no, that's fine. Try the lock. Try the box. Should we flesh? Should we say flesh? Try it. F L S H. Put it in there. See if it opens. I bet there's treasure or something awesome. I don't even know. Maybe some. Actually, I could use a snack. I've been here for a long time. So, hopefully okay, something edible. I don't know. Something. What is it? <gasps> it's a key! A key! A key! What do we do with it? I don't know, try to get out. Let's get out of here. I'm done. We, we solved Let's this go. thing. We could be traveling. Brian, we're time. leaving! Brian, see Whatever. ya! Bye! One of the villains stood out to you, but the experience of unmasking them and understanding them at a deeper level has only just begun. This week in your individual work and in your group, you're gonna be discovering more about the villain, how it's blocked your path, and how God has a path and a way for you to get through that villain to a life of greatness. By the way, you need the Crossroads app for your group. Don't forget that. It's free wherever you get your app. It's chock full of not only the journey experience, but a lot of other really helpful resources. And if you're watching this like, What's all this journey stuff? I'm so confused, Kyle, I don't understand. Don't worry, we have your back. Just go to online.crossroads.net and chat with us. We'd love to answer any questions, get you connected, or help you with anything you need in your life. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next time for episode three. I'm Stephanie Byerly. And I'm Robert Byerly. And we live in Newport Beach, California. 
I think we started going to Crossroads before we moved to Cincinnati in 2003. The first journey that we were part of was the consume journey. That was the first time that it's ever really been explained to us that everything we own is God's. So I think that was where um, our story started with becoming more generous mm -hmm. um, and really asking God to use us in a greater way. The different campaigns, the game changed, it changed us. One, I think the accountability piece of it, that consistently giving every week out of generosity and love, and then seeing the things that Crossroads was, was doing and growing, investing in people, investing in trips, investing in the local community, investing in other communities around the world. You feel like you were a part of a, a team in something big. Then you could see the blessings that would happen in your life from that generosity too, and how it sort of changed your heart. And then you just want to give more, whether it was giving your time, your talents, your finances, whatever it was. We just live in more freedom mm -hmm. um, because I think we know that everything we own is really is God's. And so I think when it comes to parenting or marriage or whatever it looks like, there's a freedom there to, to press into what God has for us. It changes the way we live, um, not just living for ourselves, but serving each other in love. I believe it's God, right? I mean, God's working on that in a place like Crossroads. Is, it's given a, a place for us to learn about different things, let God sort of chip away at our selfishness, mm -hmm. uh, yes. bring uh, a place where your kids can thrive or we can thrive as husband and wife and family, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's been awesome. Yeah. And don't forget to subscribe or if you want to keep watching, click right here.